who are you? Macklemore. Macklemore, who'd you have beside you? My man, the dude from Spokane, Washington, Ryan Little King Lewis. Hello, Ryan. Hello, Nardwar. Welcome to South by Southwest. Thank you. Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. To welcome you to South by Southwest, I thought I'd give you guys some gifts. First off, for Ryan, some immortal technique. (laughs) 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 You love the technique, don't you? I know this album very well. When did you get into immortal technique? Oh, geez. Uh, In high school, this was was one of the first, what is this? The Third World. This was, uh, this is one of the first hip hop albums I got into when I started producing beats. So, yeah, high school, 15, 16 years old, somewhere in there. And for Macklemore, got something for you, some high row uh, glyphics. With the Third track line. that you love. Uh, I love all these tracks. You Never Knew is, is a classic, absolutely classic. Yeah, this is, this is some West Coast underground gold right here. These guys are incredible. Is it true, Macklemore, you threw out dicks to the audience at Numo's? <laughs> I threw some D on them. Yes, I did. I, I threw out numerous hamburgers. How did you know that? Well, you're Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. We have to know that. You do have to know that. Yes, I threw out, I, I went to Dick's and ordered probably like 50 cheeseburgers and threw them into the crowd. Now, were people mad that they were thrown and like they couldn't eat them easily or did they pick them up? What happened? You can eat them in, you can eat them in like three bites usually. Three to four bites. If you've ever, if you've ever eaten a dick, no, if you've ever eaten dicks, you know that a, a cold cheeseburger, and, and it's, it's delicious. This record right here, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Yes. How my- does that relate to dicks? Sir Mixclot, Posse on Broadway. Well, Broadway is a street that dicks is on and my posse's on Broadway is a Sir Mix a Lot cut that is a Seattle classic. Not even just Seattle, just a worldly, all nations classic record. For all the Broadways. For all the Broadways. Everywhere. But he's specifically rapping about Broadway in Seattle, and he shot his music video for My Posse's on Broadway at Dick's. And you can see the Dick's kind of in the corner right there. Absolutely. No, no I'm asking this to you, Macklemore, because Baby Got Bags? Bags? Baby got bags. Did you some, do some announcement like at the airport with Sir Mix-a-Lot for bags? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Sir mix Maybe he did baby got bags. We, I, did, I did do an airport. Yeah, reports. Yeah, he like, did. You can't smoke here. <laughs> yeah, go to the bathroom here and, and pick up your bags and don't be a terrorist. So, Ryan, you've had a lot of experience with DJing, but some of your records get destroyed. What three CDs did your dad break? <laughs> Shit. Um, he broke. Could you explain the context. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to have parental advisory CDs, so when I was 12, my dad broke DMX. What's the one where he's covered in blood on the cover? Flesh of My Flesh. Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood, or whatever. Uh, Jay Z, it was a CD single of Money Anything. Oh, that's messed up. And I think a burnt copy of Tupac's Greatest Hits. And we have a yearly discussion every year where I remind him how fucked up the whole thing was. Dad. And you were in a band at the time, Stop. Shema? Shema? No, not Shema, Schema. Uh, Schema, I call Shema. Shema, I was in Shema. Uh, no, I was in a... Um, what band had seagulls in the wind? <laughs> oh, you're, you're digging up some shit, Narwar. And you change it to poison... Oh my goodness. Poison to my ears. Why did you change it to poison to my ears? Oh, uh, cuz I um thought it sounded better. I don't know. <laughs> poison to my ears? Yeah, this was a, this was a What do you know about his secret past? I knew about What what's I don't know about any of this. I don't know how he knows about I barely know about any of this anymore. Um yeah, so I was in a metal band. We had three songs, one of which was originally called Seagulls in the Wind, and we changed it to Poison to My Ears. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Yeah, we don't, there's good reasons why we don't bring any of this up, Nardwar. And I have another gift for you, Macklemore. Kid Sensation, Sea Town Baller. Yes, yes. I see this. I pr- this, is, this is dope. This is dope. And they're into like griffy baseball tunes, aren't they? What can you say about the Kid Sensation? Kid Sensation did a song with Griffey 
where Griffey is actually rapping. What? And some would say better than Shaq ever did. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like Griffey can uh, he actually might get kid sensation on his own record. I'm saying. Careful. I'm saying Griffey he he can rap. I love Seattle rap. It is so good. Macklemore, Ryan Lewis, Kid Sensation, but also we got to give some props to Source of Labor. Oh, oh, bringing them out. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Source of Labor. Yes, this is um, this is a Seattle classic. Foundation. Yes, this is. Um, I used to watch Source of Labor as a kid, and they used to play at Bumper Shoot, which is like the festival in Seattle that you go to at the end of the year, um, at the end of the summer. And I used to watch Source of Labor and be like, one day I want to be like those guys. Because they were the only local hip-hop group that ever got any love on any festival in Seattle. So this was, um, you know, John booked me, who was the MC wordsayer, booked me for my first show when I was like 15 or 16 years old. Um, and thank you, Source of Labor. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, wordsayer. Thank you. Thank you, Jay Moore. And thank you, Source of Labor. This is incredible. But Street Level Records, thank you. Why should you thank Street Level Records? Oh, for so many gangster classics in <laughs> Seattle. Um, for Wands. For Wands. For Wands. For D Sane. Shout out to my guy D Sane. He is. Um, he is Street Level. He Records. is Street Level Records. But yes, we called D Sane one night. We were in the studio and we were like, we need somebody that can pull off this hook. We needed a, a Nate Dog esque sounding man with a deep baritone voice. And we called him at about one o'clock in the morning and said, D. Sane, do you know somebody? Because I'd had a conversation with him and I felt like he had somebody and yes, he did. That person was Wands. Wands was waking up at eight o'clock in the morning the next day to go to work, but he decided to come to the studio and we recorded Thrift Shop. He was like a full-time software test engineer. Pretty much, yes. Like on the 21st floor of an apartment looking over Soto. I didn't even know that, but I like full benefits, retirement, paid holidays. That he left all behind. For the thrift shop. But he's having a great time, though. He's having fun. Thank you, Street Level Records. So it's their fault, ultimately, not Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, really. I would put it on D-Sane, yes. Do you have, like, a Lego Space Needle thing? I do. That seems awesome. <laughs> I've never even opened that, Nardward. Where? Like, it's still in the box, man. Where did you get it? I think my girlfriend gave it to me. Because I love it. It looks so awesome. Like anything Space Needle, I just love. Yeah. And I'm obsessed by the Space Needle. In fact, I don't know if you guys have seen this record here at all. Check it out. It is KO Country, High Country. There's KO's Bashful, Bobby Wooten, living and broadcasting from the Space Needle. Your radio station in the Space Needle. People lived there. He had a bachelor pad. Open up this record. Check it out. He no lived here. Could way. this be your fantasy, Mac Lamore? No way. Look right here. What do we see? <laughs> Bobby Wooten naked. Wow. wow. That is incredible. I had no idea. I wow. In, I knew someone lived in the Smith Tower, but this is, that's, this is That is next level. That's what dreams are made of, Nardward. Does, I'm just, does it still exist? Hidden somewhere? That's what I want you guys to find out. I'm so obsessed by it. Like, when you were up there, did you see Bobby's Space Needle penthouse? I don't think... I think it's a restaurant. However, there's numerous doors that they're like, no, don't go in there. So. Do you think Bobby Wooten is still in there taking a bath naked? <laughs> we can only hope. Some 30 years later. What's very interesting, again, about the success of Macklemore and Ryan Lewis is you've penetrated some interesting magazines. Bon Appetit? Yes. And the International Business Times. I did not know this. They did a study to see if we actually changed thrift shopping across America, I believe, and we haven't. <laughs> In what? terms of thrift shopping what? sales. In terms of thrift shopping sales, they haven't gone up. Although I don't know if I believe that shit. Quote, Macklemore's thrift shop has had no effect on actual thrift shop revenues. Lies. Bullshit. A spokeswoman for Goodwill said she has not seen an impact on a national level. People are mad. Goodwill said that? That's messed up. That's, ask Value Village. Ask Savers. 
data from Goodwill's Seattle branch was not available. Yeah, exactly, because they're so busy. Selling shit. The Salvation Army did not respond to a request for sales figures. Again, too busy. But I thought that's awesome that they actually did a study just to check to see if it's made any difference. I've, I've been curious, and I do not believe their study I don't either. at all. Please present this gift right here to your bandmate and explain to the people why he is getting this record right here. Wow. Chris Cross. And this is the Best of Chris Cross remixed. And why is Ryan Lewis getting this record? Are you going to bring this up again? Did, did I ever bring... You didn't know who Chris Cross was? I didn't know who Chris Cross was two years ago. Which since is crazy. Since then. Which is fucked up. If you're gonna if you're gonna make rap beats, you have to know who Criss Cross is. Totally Man, I was I was on that immortal technique. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Anything else you want to add to yes. the people out there at all? Absolutely, because you have been so generous with us, giving us so much vinyl and so many great gifts. We came with a present for you, Nardward. No way. Thank you. Yes. Well, don't thank me yet. So anyway, we brought you something and I would like to give it to you. Oh, thank you very much. And why don't you just reach your hand in there and grab it? Oh my god. This this no way. This is it. This is the, the, the if it's good enough for Ellen, it's good enough for me. You have your very own Derek Erdman customized Nardward, the human serviette jacket. That is incredible. That is exactly what you gave Ellen. Well, except, except with Ellen. I didn't give her the hardwar jacket. I gave it with Ellen's face. Oh, I, uh, thank you. I'm so... Okay, let me put it on. And if... Turn around. Show the people the front. If you reach in the pocket, there is also... In the front pocket, there is also a present for you. This is amazing, Macklemore. Oh, stop. Stop. No, this, it is amazing. Was Ellen <laughs> supposed to get this? Or? No. That's for you. Wow. This is what is it? Thank you. It's, it's a gift. No, it, <laughs> what is it? What is that? Thank you. Yeah. It's a gift. <laughs> thank you. But what kind of gift, Nardward? You are showing how well endowed I am. This is a gift. This is an advertisement. Thank you. And thank you, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, for this incredible gift and incredible interview. And thanks for being on this journey as we all have been. It's South by Southwest 2011 to South by Southwest. I like to spin there too, yeah, yeah. to 2013. Thanks so much for your time thanks. and the gift. Keep on rocking in the free world. And do, 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 do.